so after being confronted with his crimes, serial killer Wesley Allen Dodd claimed that death was the only way to make sure he never committed them again. So in 1989, Wesley walked into the bathroom of a movie theater in Camas, Washington. He spotted a five-year-old boy, and a few moments later, Dodd grabbed him and started moving towards the door. Hey guys, so welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be talking about Wesley Allen Dodd, um, who basically would molest children and murder them. Sounded, yeah, that's basically what it is. Um, so we went in depth about um, how he grew up and what he did to the, his last victim. Um, I want, this one was about Washington State. So last week's I did Oregon, so this one's Washington State. Next week's gonna be um, about probably Utah. So guys, I wanna say, you know, I hope you guys do enjoy this video. And um, it is like a little bit of a touchy subject like I'm gonna probably say throughout the video. Like it is a very touchy subject since it does involve, it does evolve around kids. I really don't want to like, to offend anyone i don't want that's not my idea like that's not my that's not why i did this i just want to really make sure like you know we do know that there's people out there and a lot, a lot of the times the media doesn't even cover it which is very sad but this case that i'm talking about is like in the 1965 or 19 like 1989 around that area so it was like you know a couple years ago but it does happen and um I just want to make sure you know you guys do stay safe with your siblings with your kids you know whatever the case may be it's just make sure you know you always keep an eye on them because we just never know what's gonna happen you never know who's around us we don't you don't know their true intentions when they're with a kid and like i will say in later i'm gonna be doing a giveaway next week so stay tuned for that and i hope you guys enjoy this video about wesley allen todd dodd i keep saying todd it's dodd I just do not why I keep saying Todd, but it's Dodd. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it and get to know more about Wesley Allen and why you know he committed those crimes and how it started. So I just went ahead and did my foundation and eyebrows before um, filming, so I could just take a little bit of time. Um, yeah, because I really did take forever to do my eyebrows, which it sucks sometimes, but. So for my eyebrows, I basically just use the chocolate um, mousse from Morphe. And for foundation, I'm using the Anne Fallenbull Total Cover, full coverage from L'Oreal. And for primer, like always, I'm using Baby Skin Instant Pore Eraser. And I'm using the Morphe uh, Contour Sponge since that one works really good for me. So as Dodd walked out of the theater with the boy in his arms, the child started to cry. So the basically the theater employees were immediately became suspicious since the little boy was screaming for help. They were, knew they were witnessing an abduction and ran after Dodd. So basically while running away, away from the employees, uh, Dodd knew he wasn't going to get away. So Dodd basically released the boy just outside the theater and he ran to his car so leaving the boy um you know making sure the you know the boy basically went back to his parents um meanwhile the employees told the child's mother and the boyfriend at the time the boyfriend's name was william gravis and the mother i couldn't find the mother's name for some reason um they basically told her that her son has been abducted Gravis immediately asked for the description of Dodd's car and ran on foot to go find him. Luckily, he found the car had been broken down just a few blocks from the theater. So basically, he was pretending to offer help and then Gravis approached him and Dodd put him in a headlock. Which, the, the, you know... That was just pure luck, since sometimes that doesn't really happen. Like, the abductors would already have a plan and stuff like that. So that was really, a, like, I think that was very good luck for them um, to find a little boy like that. And to find the abductor, you know, because sometimes they do get away. And it was just amazing how that little scenario 
went through and how thank god he didn't get abducted and he was basically safe so gravis then physically um hauled dodd back to the theater where the theater witnesses bonded dodd's arm with a belt as they waited for the police to arrive so they basically just um tied him his hands to something i don't know exactly what it was um, so I'm assuming like a chair or a pole or something. Um, as, and so basically capturing the guy, making sure he was put, staying put so that he wouldn't escape. And so they basically waited for, um, the cops to come. So once in police custody, um, Dodd started to talk. Um, the, he started to talk. So the incident in the movie theater wasn't basically his first abduction. There were, have been many more, and not all the victims have been as lucky, like I was saying, as the boy in the movie theater. So after three days of questioning, Dodd confessed to have murdered three children in total. Armed with a search warrant, police searched Dodd's room in the town of Vancouver, Washington, where he um, was living. Inside, they found photographs and one of the murdered children named Lee. In the apartment, they also found Lee's underwear. Nearby was a homemade torture rack and a diary. Basically, where he was recording what he did for every murder that he, um, I don't want to say accomplished, but that he basically got, a, not got away with, fuck, but got away with at the time. Mm. So with this evidence, their detectives could close the book on at least three murders. Which, you know, is crazy to say at least three since they really still don't know. Um, so yeah, basically the detectives closed the book and on the basic on those three murders that they um I guess basically found evidence to. So Wesley Allen Dodd grew up in Washington in somewhat of a troubled home. So he grew up as a very very shy child but also seemed to have a dark sexual compulsion of to expose himself to other children something he began acting on on just 13 years old so basically showing him you know his private or whatever you know you know basically exposing himself to so other kids could see a reaction of out of that um so but, but basically exposing himself wasn't enough and Dodd began molesting his younger cousins and neighborhood kids and at 15 Dodd was arrested for one of those incidents due to his youth police declined to pursue charges and recommended to get counseling instead and that is what bothers the like hell out of me like you basically like if you see someone who like has not symptoms but like he falls into a category of becoming a molester or you know someone who's going to be hurting kids or touching them like in my opinion like i said it's my opinion i'm no i'm no judge or no like um doctor or whatever but if you see that your kid is touching up, you should get like have your kid get evaluated and get that help. Like me as a, like I'm not a parent, but like I co-parent with my mom. So you know, as a like co-parenter and as a sister, like if I see my brothers doing that or doing something like that, I would be like, hey mom, we need to, you know, figure this out before it does get worse. Like no shame, no shame because in reality it's no. No one's fault is just how their brain is working. You know, it's just how, it's basically how their brain is working. Like, there's no reason, you know, no, I don't believe, like, it was their childhood since I do. I'm really, a, when I say, like, I'm really hard believer, I feel like just because you were abused or molested as a child doesn't mean you have to do it to other people. Like, you could always break that cycle. Mm. That's what I believe in. Like like I said, I was born in the system. So I have very, like, 
different opinions as other people you could say since I wasn't raised in a typical mom and dad home but like I said nothing wrong with that like no shame to like people raised in the system or to my mom it just gave me a more of a different um look on different things as the typical 20 year old would so Dodd continued molesting children for the next several years in 1981 he joined the navy he was actually just discharged um because his superiors discovered that he was molesting children on the base this time he served only 19 days in jail and was ordered to undergo counseling the counseling had no effect on dodd's compulsion to harm kids and he fell into a routine of molesting kids being caught and being released with a slap on the wrist like i said it just is disgusting to me because even though he joined the army, so he was basically like, I don't know how old he was, but I'm gonna say like maybe 18 and over since that's all you have to join the army, I think it is. Okay, so or 17 or 18 now. So by that age, you kind of understand, or I would think, right, I don't know, but I would think you would know not to that it's not okay to harm kids it's not like quote unquote normal to do that but like i said it just depends on how his own brain was functioning and how basically it seemed like no one was there for him so basically it seemed like no one was really there for him which like is kind of sucks but it kind of it, it does happen like your parents can just have you and won't like raise you and stuff but like for him to be caught and to just oh it's fine you know just go to just stay 19 no 17 19 days in jail and then just go counseling and you know and that's it like for me that was just very shocking when i when I was doing the thing, when I was doing the like investigation, but like doing my research about it, and that's kind of why I kind of wanted to do this specific one since it kind of is a little bit touchy for some people, especially for me. But it's just really crazy how the system is, how like how he got away with that, even though he was already getting in trouble with um, at a very young age at 13 and not people not doing something about it so but his sexual desires continue to grow darker over the years so don't roll in a diary about um not just his desire to molest kids but to murder them he began writing about the possibility of performing medical experiments on his victims to turn them into like zombie-like and to basically molest them. So basically drugging the kids and then he touching them and not like them not reacting because they're going to be drugged. Um, which is really, really disgusting. So in September of 1989, Dodd, Lord Cole, and William Near, they were brothers, and they were 11 and 10. He lured them into a wooded area. There, um, he forced them to undress and tied the boys, tied the boys to a tree. He then began molesting them. When he finished molesting the kids, he stabbed the kids repeatedly and like a lot of basically like a lot of serial killers that you know do kill he fled the area and um the kids died from the stabbing so they basically like bled out and that's how they actually died and a month later and so basically a month later um Dodd lured a four-year-old Lee to his apartment. He kept Lee overnight while taking photographs of the kid. He wanted a way to kill Lee so the body could be fresh enough to perform experiments on. So 
I'm gonna do a little recap real quick before I forget. So for my little bit of a you know bronzer type of look that I did today, I'm using the Park Avenue Princess with the similar chart the one I used, I think on one of the other videos that I used. And then for a little bit of blush, I used the if I could find it. For the blush, I used the Wonderless Doss to Done. I use a Havana Heights, I use a smidder one. So I use my Morphe with Bretman Rock in Babe in Paradise. And I use um uh these two. These two. I, I like combining those two. And yeah. So and then for today's you know little I'm gonna, gonna not really gonna do a bright I almost see myself bright color. I'm just gonna work with a brown and it is you know like a somewhat of a natural color type of thing. So I'm gonna use my dirty. I'm gonna use my Morphe 352. It's the it's called the second natural. And I'm gonna go in with the colors. I already have a couple colors on, but I wanna go with the coloring universe universal. And maybe so this one's universal and this one's spice. So I'm gonna go in those two little browns and play with those. A little update of what I did I'm doing right now so in the morning Dodd strangled Lee and hung his body in the closet before leaving to work which is freaking weird because like and how he acted at work was just you know a typical just a typical day like he like he was acting like he didn't have he didn't freaking molest the kid. He didn't freaking. It's like he was acting like if everything was just a normal fucking typical day, and like you know, and he didn't care that there was a kid that was dead in his freaking closet, being hung, and him not caring that he freaking molested the kid. One thing about me. You know, before I go back into the store, like I said, I was going to do. I hate, hate, hate people who abuse and molest children. I, or anybody, you know, but for me, it's just it, children. Because children don't, are just these kids who, I don't know, they're just, kids are just so precious. And for somebody to, like, do that to a freaking kid, it just, it literally boils my blood and, not a lot of things. I don't really get pissed off that much. Okay, yes, I do. But, like, I don't get pissed off to the point where, like, my my blood boils. And this, when I talk about this, like, it does make me piss off. Because I have watched kids, like, I've always, you know, I'm always taking care of, like, you know, if it's not my kids, I'm always taking care of somebody else's kids. And, because I love kids, like, I generally do. They're so, just so... I was like not cool but it's just so amazing because like they'll make you realize like they appreciate the little fucking things and nowadays like we don't even appreciate you know there's sun or there's like fucking trees or anything and they and they do and they just so they're just so freaking cool like I can't wait to be a foster mom I'm so freaking excited like that's gonna be my thing like I don't want to have kids well I, I do well I don't know if I do or not but I really want to become a foster mom and i'm very excited for that because like i can't wait for to have kids to have foster kids and help them with that because i went through that so it's like i understand if I, and for people to like take advantage of a fucking four-year-old a fucking 10 or 12 year old while you're fucking 40 is just so disgusting to me you know and it's just Anyways, just, you know, let's move on. So, when he returned back to his house, he took the body, he took the body down and disposed of it um, in trash bags, he just, but just keeping the boys' underwear. The body was then soon discovered, sparking a manhunt of the killer, Wesley and Dodd. So, basically, while everybody was searching for him, this fucking fool just stayed in his apartment, making plans for the fucking future murders and how to molest other kids, and con constructing 
a rock which to torture his next victim so this was freaking literally sitting kids ki chilling home while everybody else is looking for him because they found a kid and this fool is sitting down and just writing what to do for his next murder not caring anyways in court Dodd refused to talk on his own defense which I don't blame him because no one's gonna fucking forgive a child molester and a fucking murderer okay so he he was basically claiming that it was pointless he requested instead that he be executed by hanging the same way his last victim died he stated that he hoped that it would bring peace to his victim's families he's that seemed um to understand that the system had failed to stop him many times before he was confident that he, if he was to be re fucking released, he would kill again. It was hard to say how sincere Dodd's like, remorse was, but he clearly wanted to be executed. Which, I... It's not bad or anything, but, like, for... I feel like it was for him to think, like, Oh, I mean, I need to be executed because that's how I—that's how I killed my last victim. It was kind of like, and him say also, no, and also him saying that he would—that would bring peace to the family. Like, no, that's not gonna bring peace to the mom. That's not gonna bring peace that his, his, her child was molested and fucking autographed, photographed. So like, no, that's not gonna bring peace just because you fucking got executed, like. I'm but sorry, I'm sorry, but if my brother or my child were to get molested and murdered or whatever, I wouldn't care if he was executed. Honestly, with me, since I kind of, I do have an uncle who's in prison and stuff, and I, I hear so much about molesters, I would actually want them to rot in prison because they do get, um, they get beat up and they get, like, like they're child abusers and child molesters and rapists anything wrong with children they are hell it's hell for them in prison 10 times worse than anybody else so really i feel me personally right i don't know how everybody else feels but me personally if my somebody if my family were like that i'd rather have that person brought in prison to be executed like i said that's just me personally i'd rather have them live through that hell every single day instead of just being just dying for five fucking like having be hung for like a 30 seconds or 15 seconds however long it takes to be hung or executed or whatever and having them just you know gone in an instant like for me if that was my kid he lived for two days being molested and then killed and being hung like i'd rather have him suffer with like him suffering instead of just hanging like i said that's just me um yeah that's, that's like i said that's just me like i don't know that's just how i how i think i'm like you know I, I feel like everybody's entitled to what they think and stuff you know but that's just my way of how i take it he said quote unquote that's what he said he says i must be executed before i have an opportunity to escape or kill someone else he said i promise he's like if i do I promise it, it, you I will kill and rape again and I will enjoy every minute of it that was his last some of his last words and it's just so so crazy how like people could have people could have stopped that like they sincerely could have stopped it at age 13 and instead like they just like instead they just basically let him go for it. like instead of like yep, you know what you're fine you're no let me you know you're just 13 like is what a typical 13 year old does like well no you know you should have fucking gotten more help he his parents should have been more active in that whole molesting thing out of age 13 so i'm gonna pop on these eyelashes real quick and i will be back and pop on some lashes and the lashes were the magna volume so in the end dodd got his wish and 
basically he got executed by hanging in 1993. That was the first um, judicial hanging in the United States since 1965. So it's been a good couple years since the last um, executed hanging. That technique was so unfamiliar um, that the um, executors had to basically use an army manual from the 1980s as a guide since they didn't you know it's been a fucking long time since the last you know hanging so dodd's last words um were stating saying that he had found god and other child militias could change by doing the exact same thing he also stated that he had a desire to help people like him from offending in a way he kind of did shortly after dodd's crimes came to light Washington passed one of the toughest laws in the nation against sex offenders. Only one can hope that in some way, the tragic fate of dogs and victims helps save life of other children. So when I talk, like, you know, I, I know I do sound like, I don't try to sound aggressive, but like I talk like, I feel like I do talk a little bit, mm, I guess I'm passionate, but that's just how I am because I feel like these, you know cases and this how people get treated should be like we should be more awareness about it um and it's just not for like murders or child molesters it's also for like everything that's happening like around us like in this in like the foster care system and how broken that is so i kind of hope you guys enjoyed this video i know it wasn't very like you know unicorns and rainbows but i kind of you know not everything is unicorns and rainbows at the end of the day. So, thank you guys again for watching. I hope you guys, you know, really did enjoy the video and it kind of bring a little bit more insight of what happens. So, if you guys could please subscribe and um, comment what like state you guys want to hear, or uh, if you guys even know about like a good serial killer, you guys could let me know. I would love to do some research on it. And I also want to thank Brandon and Deanna for helping me. Um, like edit my i want to call it like a little essay that i do um thank you both for helping me since they do help me with that because I, like i said i suck at writing and um you know i just want to make sure like when i do talk i have a hard time pronouncing words as you guys can tell but you know i'm also trying to you know be more like talking not correctly but making sure i use the right language and grammar so, you know, shout out to you guys. Thank you guys again for helping me. So, guys, I will see you guys next week since I think I post. I'm starting to post Thursdays and Fridays. So, stay tuned for next Thursday or Friday. And um, I am going to also be doing a giveaway next week. So, thank you guys again. And I reached 50 subscribers. So, thank you all 50 of you guys who subscribed to me. I really do appreciate it. Um, you guys are amazing. So thank you guys, and I hope to see you guys next week. And hope you guys have a good, good day and a good weekend. All right, guys, I will see you guys next week.